In this video, we're gonna discuss what a market maker does. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. So what does a market maker do? What is it all about? How do they work? How do they operate? Well, do you know what? There are different laws for different countries and the way that they operate in intricacy. So I'm just going to go into detail. I'm going to go into a kind of broad overview of what a market maker does with the intricacies of each individual exchange um, up to them. So basically a market maker is there to provide liquidity for people at all times. So if you become a registered market maker in um, let's say we're trading in ABC commodity or stock or uh, whatever it could be, whatever it may be. You are basically saying you will always be you will always be able to buy or sell that stock. So if a member of the public can come in and always buy or sell that stock. So the market maker's job is to always provide liquidity in a reasonable size. OK, there's a pre-agreed size for that as well um, at any time. So whatever the scenario is, a member of the public or retail person come in and sell that. Now, the price, who knows, that may be different. So let's have a look. So let's say you're a market maker and let's say you have, I don't know, a price of $20.10 um, um, and I'm gonna use dollars, but I'm more f familiar with the UK side of stuff, but let's use dollars just for example. Let's say that's that's the spread you're offering as a market maker. Okay, the, the, there may be other participants in the in this stock and the spread may be tighter from either people putting their orders directly into ECNs or in the sets order book if we're talking London Stock Exchange um, or the futures order book if we're talking the futures. Um, but whatever, as a market maker, we're saying, okay, we are going to offer a um, thousand shares at twenty dollars thirty cents or twenty pounds thirty p, and we're going to offer to buy a thousand shares at twenty pounds uh, ten p or twenty dollars ten cents. So you're always offering that two-sided thing. Now what happens is someone comes along and let's say they buy those. Okay, that comes off our own inventory. We are now short as a market maker, short a thousand shares. So we've got to do something. Okay, we either don't care because it's not a lot. Um, or we now say, okay, we'd like to buy those shares back. Now in a perfect world, what's gonna happen is we are gonna be making a market. Someone's gonna come along and buy a thousand. Someone's gonna come along and sell a thousand, buy a thousand, sell a thousand. We're gonna make it a nice 20 cent spread in between the two, just for taking on that risk. In other words, we're providing a facility that people can always transact. So we're taking on a better risk and we're being paid for that risk. Now, obviously the market doesn't always do that. Sometimes the market's moving an uptrend. We might get filled on the $20.30. Um, and then we might say, okay, well, we may then come on and come back on at say $20.70. You know, we've always got a, I think there's a time period for certain exchanges when you can reload, uh, but you've always got to have a best bid and best offer. So you might come on and say, well, I don't really want to have any more on the sell side. People keep buying from me. I'm going to make that a little bit wider. I don't think there are any ob obligations to how wide that is. It might be wrong. Some exchanges might have that, but in my experience when I've traded, on sets and on CQ and stuff on, on the stock exchange years ago, or trading via the London Stock Exchange electronically, should I say, years ago, they could pretty much make it as much as they, or as little as much as they wanted. They weren't obliged to have it tight. And whether that's changed or not, I don't know. But okay, that's the point now. Now they might say, okay, well, I've sold, I've sold some at 2030, uh, I'm going for 2070. And let's say now they get filled again on that. Now they're 2,000 shares short of the average between the two. What they might do is they might then get more aggressive with that bid. You know, they might kind of push this up and say, well, actually, you know what? If I can get $20.40, I'm going to still make some money on this because I'm going to lose a little bit of my 30, but I'm going to make more on my 70. I'm still going to make some money. Uh, I'll offer 2,000 shares. Um, and they, I think they're in, they, they, could, they can adjust the size they want. There's always a minimum size they have to offer, but they can adjust basically the size they want. And now they're hoping that ultimately those shares that they sold, they can buy them back and they can constantly make the spread in between the two. Now, that's fine and, and they've got, they're very good at this and they're very good at knowing the volatility and they're very good at, sometimes they're gonna get caught out, sometimes they're gonna have to cover a position they don't want. But generally speaking, you know, markets do trend, uh, even if they're trending, they're chopping around, it's gonna be an opportunity to make both sides of the coin for them and that's the whole point. Um, they get to a point sometimes where, you know, if they take on too much inventory, and they they can be loss making. You know, if you're in a, in a bear market condition, sometimes similar kind of thing happened with the flash crash, but it wasn't kind of a market maker. It was a, an algo who had too much inventory. But if you're making a market, and let's say the price keeps going down, you keep getting filled, keep getting filled, you then you eventually just go really low because you don't want to be filled at all. 
you've still got that inventory that you're long on, you could be taking a loss on that. You know, at some point you've got to either, you know, pull the plug on it or you just keep offering lower and lower and lower and lower. Um, and very often you're going to see kind of spreads widen. You know, the market maker spread is a difference between two. You know, that might widen under t you know, before data or whatever it may be. Again, I, I don't think they're obliged to have a, a specifically narrow spread. They're just obliged to be there to provide some liquidity. I will guess, my guess is, that if they are really ridiculously wide, then they're probably not going to be allowed to make a market for much often because there's no point. If you're at $25 and you're at $15, yeah, wow, you know, it's useless to anybody. So... That's the idea of a market maker, literally making the spread between the two, trying to make this, but all, always guaranteeing some liquidity. And if you think of like thin shares, um, especially in the UK that don't have much liquidity there, you need that functionality of the market maker so that there's always someone to take the other side of your trade. If you want to sell your shares that you've been holding for a while, you don't have to wait for another buyer for them. You can sell to that market maker. He will take a little bit of a premium on it, um, knowing that throughout the day hopefully or throughout the week you know he's going to be able to make some money on this inventory just like the spread just like anyone kind of trading anything really so they're useful guys to have uh obviously in some scenarios they they, they you've got to be careful of what they're doing i mean some people say you can read level two by looking at what the market maker's doing there's that edge there potentially but in theory just think in terms of what their function is their function is to provide liquidity provide kind of stability to, to prevent things from being too volatile if you can imagine there was no market makers and by the way there's normally multiple market makers on a stock so you've got quite a few stacks of quotes so you're not relying on one providing that so there's always going to be some liquidity then if you imagine there was none of them there and it was just a case of you and i transacting with each other if all of a sudden every single retail buyer wasn't interested um, you're going to have a scenario where there's there's, just, there's no bids on the stock. There's just low bids. Uh, people are hitting market orders. It's causing price spikes. You know they're there to dampen volatility and for that provide liquidity and for that they kind of make a bit of money um, between the spread. All right, guys, interesting little thing. Hopefully for you, if you'd like to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos from me and other traders on this channel. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye.